<clears throat> okay. I've read numerous, many of these. You go in there and you type in Lorenz transformations and you just get page after page. And I've read lots of them. Most of them people are just trying to impress you with their intelligence. The best one I've found is a paper by a fellow named Yoko Vinko, Victor Vo Yoko Vinko, Department of Physics, University of Maryland, College Park. Uh, it was dated 15 November 2004. And Professor Yoko Vinko is actually trying to teach people how to understand the Lorentz transformations rather than to uh, dazzle us with their importance and their, their intelligence. So now, I'm semi-retired. Part of the time I work as an expert witness and I'm going to do a little play act game here. I'm going to act like that Professor Yoko Vinko has been hired to represent the uh, Lorenz transformations and I've been hired as an expert witness to rebut them. The first thing I would do as an expert witness, I would take his paper, read it through completely, then I'd start back through it line by line or, or sentence by sentence and see if it's true, if it'll stand up in court. And I go through this and I get down to equation 26 and suddenly I stop. Here's equation 26 written on the board. Does it show up on the... Yes, sir. If A less than zero, we can write it as A equals minus C squared. The first thing I notice here is that this is not a true statement. Well, that could be a true statement, but it's not the whole truth. And when you're testifying in court, you have to testify to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This is not the whole truth. This is a conditional statement. Can. We can write it. Let's look at a line here. Here's zero. Here's minus infinity. Now I want to stress three things. First, the length of the line. Right down here, too small to actually be seen, is the orbits of our solar system. That's our galaxy. Somewhere out here is the edge of the observable universe. And we have no idea where this goes, but for later and for now, we're just going to put a number on it just so we can kind of have an idea. Twenty billion light years. This line extends at least twenty billion light years. That'll give us a number to work with. Now from this conditional statement, Lorentz developed his transformations. Here's the transformation for X prime. And you notice it has the conditional statement in here. Then we move on. This is one, uh, one of the more popular forms of Einstein's theory of relativity. And it's got the conditional statement in it. Here's our line again.
This is an ungraduated line, so you can put a dot on it or a dash, whatever, and call it anything you want. And since it's ungraduated, well, that's okay. So this is C squared. This is what Lorentz put on the line. Now there's the length of the line was the first thing I wanted to stress. The second thing is that this is arbitrary. We could have put that dash anywhere. Doesn't have to be there. Could have been anywhere else. And the third thing is that Lorentz truncated the remainder of the line. All he's taking into account is this when he wrote his transformations and when he did all of his work and Einstein followed him. You see? C squared. Magic number. But it's an arbitrary number. Now I could decide, oh, well I want to do some transformations. And I can put two. Two C squared. It's an arbitrary line. It could be it could be two C squared, just as easy as it could be C squared. Got a fellow here running a camera and he says, no, no, make it bigger. Five. Fellow over here says, how about twenty-five? Well, any of them. It's all it's all arbitrary. So you can make it anything you want. <clears throat> if I make this two, you know, it goes on through, all the way through. Einstein did a graph, and this is where he drew his graph and said C was the maximum speed, cosmic speed limit. You reach a point where the diminishing returns and you can't go any faster than that. Well, in mine, it would be 2c squared. And Steve's would be 5. Tim's would be 25. It's all arbitrary. to do here is find something that will represent everything. So K will take in anything. And then we move K through here it becomes a is equal to minus k squared. That becomes a k. These become k's. be something better than K. We go back through Yoko Venko's paper and early on he's got when A is greater than zero he uses infinity. That takes in the whole line. We don't have a little dash. truncating the line. We're using the whole line. And this is infinity. Minus infinity. 
This becomes infinity. This becomes infinity. This is infinity. Okay, now right here, let's figure out x prime. Let's go back to the first. And I told you we'd put a, a number with this just so we could have something to work with. We're going to square our number for infinity. come out here, for velocity, we're going to use the speed of light. We go back to here, and we use that as a, a line for a fraction. One. One over this gigantic number. Now, if that's not zero, it's close. And if we admit that Infinity could be even larger. Well, it's approaching zero. It's get this number will get bigger, and that one stays the same. So here, this count becomes And this is one. And strangely enough, we're back to Galileo's transformations. Lorentz's transformations just fall apart when you use when you quit truncating the line. And you go here. To Einstein's work. And the theory of relativity falls apart. The cosmic speed limit becomes infinity. So the particles at CERN didn't break any speed limit. They just had the wrong speed limit posted. For those of you that want to look at t prime, I got t squared, supposed to be t prime. <clears throat> okay. And you're back at Galileo's work again. Covered everything. So, if you've watched this presentation and you still believe in the, the, uh, the speed of light is the cosmic speed limit. What's that guy's name? Tim Foxworthy has a sign for you. Thank you.